with us tonight, we're going to talk to Mark Sargent. He's an expert on the flat earth. And uh, we're going to talk about the global conspiracy theory about flat earth. Hello, Mark. How are you doing tonight? I am doing well. And thank you very much for having me. Thank you very much. You know, two days ago, I had a man on here, uh, Jim Wilhelmson, and we talked about we talked about hollow earth. Yeah. And uh, you and I were talking before the show started, and you told me that's actually how you started. Uh, could you do me a favor and go ahead and tell me how that's how you started? Uh, that's how you started the belief, your beliefs in flat earth, and then where things congealed for you and lit the fire under you yeah. to talk about this in 2015. Yeah. So in, um, in 2014, I was really conspiracy bored. I, you know, I, I'm older and I never got married or had kids. And so I had a huge amount of free time on my hands. And after playing every game I ever wanted to play and doing everything I wanted to do, I went down a whole bunch of rabbit holes and realized uh, there was only so many rabbit holes left. And I actually was delving into hollow earth for a while. That was one of the last ones I looked into, uh, to where, you know, I was, I was curious about Mount Shasta and were there entrances into this hollow, you know, journey to the center of the earth type thing. And, the one of the guys, one of the prominent guys that was featured in the Hollow Earth theories was a guy named Admiral Richard Byrd, who was the youngest admiral ever in the United States Navy, who was uh, at the Japanese surrender. And then for whatever reason, I mean, there were, he was the first person to fly to the North Pole and back. I think it was in 1926, I believe, if not mistaken. And uh, there was this, you know, the rumor, speculation that he found this journey to the center of the earth, this big entrance to the North Pole. And I thought, oh, that's really, really cool. I'm thinking, well, after that, he must have spent all his time uh, at the North Pole. No, the, the United States military sent him down to, uh, no, I say down, out to Antarctica. And he spent basically the rest of his life from uh, the late 1920s all the way up until Operation Deep Freeze, 1955, 1956, flying around Antarctica looking for something. I mean, that's saying something, you know, the, he was the, the world's living, greatest living explorer at the time. And the, the government had him just flying in these huge patterns down in Antarctica looking for something. And that's that was the, the beginning of the rabbit hole that I couldn't step away from uh, to where when I was started, because if you look at that long enough, eventually it gets you into, well, he was down there because the, the world's flat. You're living in a building and he was looking for the outer marker. And I was going, well, flat earth, that's stupid. Everybody knows flat earth is, is dumb, even though no one quite has figured out why it's the only conspiracy we debunked to children. Right. We don't talk about JFK or Pearl Harbor or the moon landing or anything to children, but we absolutely bring up flat earth to them. And we say, yeah, we used to think it was flat, but we don't think that anymore. Here's a globe. We're going to put it in the corner of your classroom. And it's going to stay there for the rest of your schooling. And then we're going to put it in weird places in television programs and movies the rest of your life. You haven't seen it, but you will now. And. That was in 2014, and I, I thought, oh, okay, Flat Earth is stupid. I can, I can definitely disprove this within you know, a weekend and try to shoot this thing down for over the course of a few days, right? That turned into weeks, which turned into months, and nine months later, February of 2015, I gave up. That's like, you know what? I, there's too many loose ends. There's too many uh, side rabbit holes that, that, for whatever reason, I can't resolve. So I'm gonna make. I'm gonna go the other way. I'm gonna make a series of videos called Flat Earth Clue. Is gonna put it out onto the internet because I believe the internet hive mind is very, very intelligent. And, uh, and, and it basically a cry for help saying, tell me where I went wrong. Tell me why the earth isn't flat and see if you can do it without using the word NASA, you know, a, a definitely a DOD agency. It has been since minute one. And that was in the beginning of 2015. And instead of the academics, I put all my, you did absolutely what you're not supposed to do. I put all my contact information, my physical address, my full name, everything you'd ever want to know about me because I want people to get a hold of me. It's like, tell me, tell me where I went wrong. And instead of the academics calling me up, you know, from whatever university and saying, okay, here's what you screwed up on. If you forgot to carry the two, you can shut down your YouTube channel. I had all sorts of people contacting me, not just not just strangers or people from the media, but subject matter experts, all branches of the military and air traffic controllers and engineers and just structural people. And you name it. And they all said the same thing. Pilots, they all said the same thing, which was, yeah, flat Earth's not that nuts. Here's why. 
the calculations, everything we're, we're, it's, we couldn't see the forest for the trees. And here we are. Then that was back in 2015. Here we are eight years later, three books, a uh, Netflix documentary, um, a whole bunch of conferences and meetups in different parts of the world. And I lost count of how many interviews and, but yeah, they, they, the, any doubts I had evaporated in 2015 to where the, the short version, I'll, I'll give you a quick summary is you are not living on a tiny little ball, this little rock that's flying through space that's covered with a little tiny bit of water and even a, a tinier amount of atmosphere, you know, in an impossibly huge universe. And you're not leftover residue from the Big Bang and your life means nothing. You are in a building, a structure with walls and a floor and a ceiling, and it was built just for you. And your life means everything. And uh, it, 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 the reason why it's resonated so far is it gives people hope. So there you go. That's my nickel tour. So in 2014, did you have a great life change? That no, this on? not uh, really. Were you married before? It, nope, you were nope, never, never married. Oh, this one never I had kids. I was, I was, um, I, I started out playing video games for a living. Uh, I won a, a computer pinball tournament back in the the nineties. So weird. And that company hired me and flew me out from Seattle and uh, to Boulder, Colorado. And I, did startup companies, tech companies, and I taught proprietary software for the better part of 20 years. And just kind of, you know, and when you teach, that was back before we, you know, did a lot of uh, online tutoring, you know, you actually, I actually flew out to all sorts of different places in the country, which you'd never ever go to on vacation. And that, and just had a lot of, had a lot of fun, a lot of time on my hands. And by, again, by the time I was done, uh, you know, I, I had had enough chance to look, I was there, I'm older. So I, I was there when the internet was new. Right. And you know, when you could finish the internet almost. And so I went down the early rabbit holes and then more and more, I've got an opinion on just about every conspiracy you can think of. Some I like, some I don't. And flat earth, I hate it, which by the way, is one of our t-shirts, which is I became a flat earther because I tried to disprove it. Everybody hates flat earth. Everybody does. But the more you stare at it, the worse it becomes, I, you know, I, which I tell, you know, tell your listeners, if you like your life the way it is, it's a disclaimer I put it by and put in my last book and it's not reverse psychology. If you like your, the way uh, your life is right now, you know, thumbs up, everything is awesome. Don't look at this. It, it turns into a red pill, blue pill thing, because once you get down po past a certain po point, you can't turn back because I'm not, I'm not going to convince you the world is flat. I'm not even here to persuade you. I just put the seed in your head. You tear it down. And then if something goes wrong and you don't like what you see, well, tough. You were the one that tore it down. You're not going to be able to build it back up again. So again, I, which is why I love that line from the matrix. You know, we only free minds after, you know, we don't free them um, after a certain age because it's, it's too much. It's too much. And I was actually worried in the beginning that there'd be a lot of people that would just freak out over this and they should freak out, you know, about it. It's, it's a very ominous thing. Once it hits you, you go into the five stages of acceptance. I mean, it is, it hits people like a truck and uh, it's, you know, I get a lot of emails from people saying, thank you for ruining my life. And that's a little tongue in cheek when they say that, but, uh, but I get it. I get it. So what's the name of the first video that you put out on YouTube? About this, the very the first video I put, put out on YouTube was called flat earth clues. That's it. Yeah. Flat from earth back clues. in, back in 2015. And it started out just, I mean, I did, it was the first video I had ever made. I, I didn't even know anything about video editing or, I mean, I woke up, um, if you ever saw the documentary, that, that part is absolutely true in the documentary. I woke up with this Jerry Maguire moment where uh, it's like, oh, you know what? I'm going to go the other way. With, seriously, three, three o'clock in the morning. I'm, it's like I got, I've got the, the, the narrative in my head and I sit down and I just start typing it. And at the end, I'm like, well, if I finish typing it, I might as well you know, do a voiceover for it. So I read it, we recorded it into a crappy Logitech microphone. And I was done with that. And it's like, well, might as well add some slides. Maybe I can, you know, picked up, you know, the, 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 the free program. It was Windows Live Movie Maker. It's like absolutely free. It comes with Microsoft. I'm like pasting stuff in. I had no idea what I was doing. Absolutely none. It took me all day to make an eight minute video and put it out there. And then the next day I did the same thing. And the next day I made the first um, seven clues in eight days and then slowed down a little bit and then then made a few more. And, uh, by the time we were done, I had people uh, messaging me almost immediately 
What was interesting was they said, oh, I loved your movie. And I kept saying, it's like, what movie? And it's like, what are you talking about? And then finally somebody said, well, yeah, I watched your two hour film. It was really, really good. I was going, what are you? And I go, send me the link to whatever. And people, because I made my stuff Creative Commons license, people took all the oh, clues see. and they mashed them up into okay. one video. And then they put them on their channel. And I didn't care. It's like Creative Commons. I, I, I don't care. You can use my stuff for whatever you want. And it's not about me. It's about the message. And those, those videos were getting millions of hits and way more than even my own channel. It's like, wow, it's always this fun. thing's, this <laughs> yeah. thing works. I saw it. So when they're using your stuff and get more views. Yeah. I mean, some of those guys make you. thousands of dollars, yeah. which again, I don't mind. You know, I, I literally, you know, I read through the YouTube stuff and I said, Oh yeah, creative commons license, which means people can take it. What I didn't know is there's people out there that on YouTube, at least back in the day, that would search for creative commons license videos to put them on their channel. And then they would monetize them. Oh. And it's like, it's like, all right, it's like, it's, it's fine. I mean, again, it's, it's the concept. I, I did not get into this. Nobody gets into flat earth to make money. It's a terrible idea. Um, uh, did I end up making some of my money in the end? Sure. Sure. But I wasn't pushing it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, uh, you know, I, people, I wasn't going to write a book. And then a publisher calls me up and says, Hey, you should write it. You know, can we turn your clues into a book? Yeah, sure. Do I have to do anything? No. Netflix people, you know, the, the, the documentary it's, I didn't have, you know, they called me. I, in fact, again, if I live long enough to write an autobiography, it'll be called unsolicited. I never had to pick up the phone. People just started calling me. It's like, all right, sure. Whatever. I noticed some of the interviews you did online here on YouTube. They didn't even put yeah. a link to your website or a link to your YouTube on there. Yeah, what, what? I, I, it, 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 it will, the, the spectrum. Look, I've done everything from middle schools in uh, in other countries to major networks. And so I, I don't have a series of rules when it comes to, you know, I don't encourage, it's like, look, if you're going to, I, I kind of go with whatever they're going to go with. It's like, all right, if you want to post my stuff, post my stuff. You're not going to post. I mean, there's a hundred and something interviews that have never seen the light of day for whatever reason, they, they either decide not to go with them really? or they didn't give me a copy. I never found them in, you know, in various countries. I'm like, all right, really, and whatever the, the message gets out. The, the point was, is that there was a lot of people that wanted to talk about it. And then all these other channels started popping up in the, you know, but to where we have our own conferences now. And in fact, our, our big one this year is in Vegas. And thank God we get to do a conference again because the pandemic slowed that down. Mm -hmm. And then just about every large channel you can think of did a flat earth video. You can, th I mean, seriously, you go into to YouTube and type in flat earth and then sort by um, view count, be amazed the amount of channels that, that jumped on that. I mean, the biggest one to date, I mean, still is like Shane Dawson and, you know, PewDiePie, I think is in the top 15 or 20 and all sorts of, you know, because, because everyone saw the, the trend. It's like, oh yeah, not only will you get a whole bunch more hits, but the comment sections, because it's so polarizing, will just light up. You know, the comments just go through the freaking roof. People just start, it's, a, it's like a Donnie Brook in there. Just people are just swinging for whatever reason. It's like, why are you yelling about flat earth? Well, because it's obvious. It's, it's been disproven. Really? Has it? You know, the more you look into it, what you just said right now in the last sentence that you said, you just yeah. summed up the Wikipedia article about you. Yeah. Totally By the bullshit. way, I didn't write that. Hor I have no, no idea who wrote the Wikipedia it's thing. Horrible on writing, man. I looked at it and they're saying some, you know, bad things about I'm not well, I actually I do have it right here. Apparently I do. I've never read it. Oh, uh, you don't need to. It's not it's not worthy of even being on a napkin in a in a bathroom. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I like the, the, the wiki thing. I didn't write that. I don't know who did the IMDB thing for me or any of that other stuff. I just again I just kind of go with it. Where, wherever it takes me, I, and it's one of the things is one of the rules I have, which is don't, if you can help it, don't read the comments. Cause you don't want to feed the trolls. Mm -hmm. There are, as you know, the troll community out there is merciless, absolutely merciless. And, uh, they, they will go and if, well to the, to that point, try making a video where you have a hundred thumbs up and no thumbs down. Right. It, well, now, of course, you know, they, they've killed the metrics to where you don't even see, you know, thumbs down because of the whole. You don't see, but week. you kind of know. You kind yeah. of know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but you would have people come in there, the trolls come in there to thumbs down. I mean, seriously, you can make a video about kittens playing in a children's cancer ward. 
right? <laughs> the most innocuous kind thing. And within a hundred, before that's even 500 views, you're going to have somebody coming in there and saying, I hate this. You're all gay thumbs down. And I hate everything about your sexuality and your religion. That's it's true. It's, what? Why? Why would you say this? Because they can't. So I, know, I try to, I say anyone that wants to keep any bit of their self-esteem, view the comment section. Um, it's interesting away. because um, you know, some of the things from this Wikipedia article, I'm not going to go over it, but yeah. uh, you know, it has the right things on there where it says when you first started uh, the video you put up, Flat Earth Clues. And yeah. the interesting part about this is um, you told me how short the Flat Earth Clues is. Even those people online that don't like you absolutely believe in the round earth and they think that, you know, you should put your bottom lip over your head and swallow. They're talking about <laughs> how good that video was when it first came out, when it came out. And they were calling yeah. it a documentary or documentary style. They won't call it a documentary call it yeah. documentary well you never called it a documentary no you no it's it. a freaking slideshow with with a narrative well they, they say it. that it wasn't was, even it wasn't was even subtitled so well produced at the time it blew people <laughs> that's what they said not, not i'm joke. telling you man it Is was it okay I'll, I'll give you an example and, and i appreciate that that kind that kind word mm -hmm. but uh jaron from youtube channel jaronism you know who's done a bunch of conferences with me and he's been in the communities back since 2015 he saw my flat earth clues and one of his first responses was it's like oh this guy can make can make a flatter video i absolutely can make it because it, he goes he he just didn't like my work at all he's like i can absolutely make a better video than this guy so he goes down to the second hand store the second hand store and buys a copy of an old copy of visual studio 12 i think for like six bucks wow <laughs> brings it home and by the way visual studio 12 is octaves above what i was using and what you were using came, what you were using came with the webcam at the time there was yeah. no logic oh, no, it came yeah. it came with microsoft works yes. that's yes. how bad it was it's not even supported by microsoft anymore it's literally called windows live movie maker i still use it yet, to this oh, day although I'm, I'm much more aware of what i the, the limitations of what i can do with it but it's just it's just a slideshow maker that's all it is i mean yeah i can include video clips and you know it's a cut and paste type thing it's simple to use but that's all i really needed um, the the reason why it resonated as well as it did is because when I was doing proprietary software training, I developed a knack over 20 years of being able to boil down to a topic to the average person. Cause I was teaching software to blue collar factory workers, right? You know, salt of the earth type people. And the, and so I had the ability to do that. So when I, when I looked at flat earth, I said, okay, here's what flat earth is to me. And I use like no math equations, I use very, very simple connect the dot logic, you know, not a lot, you know, to, and, and I use this sort of flow to it. You know, I, I talked in calm tones. I didn't get really agitated and, and, and scream at the top of my lungs. And it seemed to resonate to where people, people were excited about it. They, they listened to it. And then they said they would, they said it was soothing enough to where after they listened to it the first time, they would listen to it multiple times and, and it would put them to sleep. You know, they just, you know, you want those people, you know, like a podcast you can listen to, you know, late at night and you're like, like hearing my own voice. That's what happens to me. <laughs> Have you heard of the powerful right. method to achieve? All right. I'm going to go on your web, your uh, YouTube right now and see, do you still have that same video? Which uh, one? With clues. Uh, the original one. Oh yeah. 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 It's in the playlist. Years, um, it's called um, flat earth clues. Start here. All right. I and not only do I include the original clues, but I also put links in that playlist to the to the big channels that stole it from me. And oh, I, when I say stole, I mean you know they just took it, but they I wasn't going to go after them because I told them they could. Mm -hmm. Things worked but out. They never gave me credit until much much later. I'm going to play the, the background. Uh, my name was not mentioned, and they never called them Flat Earth Clues. That's how I missed it. Flat Earth wasn't even in the title. One of them was called. Um, they are hiding God with the greatest lie ever. Another one's called they are hiding God with the biggest lie ever. And one of wow. them was called under the dome full documentary. That Wait. one, that one had legs. Yeah. Because and that one was surprising because it was came out about the same time as Stephen King's series. I'll tell you what, under, your video is a hell of a lot better than that book under the dome or the series. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I did not watch the series. Don't I think past the first episode, but I had, there were people that watched that video because of the series. And, and by the time they got five or, you know, 10 minutes in, they're like, wait, does this have anything to do with the series we just watched? And they just kept watching it anyway. So I was like, yeah, cool. Well, it, it actually, it is a cool video, though. It, it is. 
Well, again, it's, it, it pulls you, you know, it's, there's no real breaks to it. Again, the sentence structure is pretty simple, but uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, lightning in a bottle. Uh, how's that? Uh, you know, I, I even made a few clues afterwards, but, no, and, but no one really cared. It was like the, the, I've never, people say, oh, why didn't you make more clues? It's like, I hardly had got any requests for the clues. It was like when the, the clues had its, you know, its natural breaking point, that's all the people wanted to watch. It's like, yep, we got it. It's a, it's a one-off. And, uh, and after that, you know, we, I just did follow up stuff, you know, went down different little angles. So but, uh, you had a question in your mind, you went to research and you had more questions to the point, you know, you couldn't you know, hold your previous position about being a flat earth. No, I couldn't, I couldn't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. So I you, couldn't do it. You put the, it's kind of like what uh, miracle on 34th street with Santa Claus, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So it, you put that it, out, you put this video out, people started contacting you out of what the people were saying, what at that time really blew your mind about the, what blew my mind were the, the new the, info. The subject matter experts, and I, I, in fact, I have a playlist just for the most of the subject matter ca experts came out between 2015 and 2017. Um, the, the people that, especially the branches of the military, one of the first guys that called me was a, uh, a Sparrow missile instructor for the, for the Navy. He had been teaching for 10 years and he goes, he goes, I want to, I want to go on your podcast. And I want to talk about this. And I go, why? He goes, because in the military, we do not use the curvature of the earth or the spin of the earth in our, in our firing solutions ever for anything. And I go, really? And, and in fact, I, I wanted him, you know, to, uh, to be anonymous because like, I really want to do that. I mean, you're an instructor in the Navy. This could go badly for you if we, if we do this. He said, nope, I want to absolutely say my, my real name. And not only that, but he, he made authentication videos for me, like him, first person flying into his ship, the Iwo Jima mm -hmm. and another one where he was actually in the Sparrow missile training room. And thank God I, he didn't go into like the, the firing consoles. Cause I think we would have gotten in trouble, but I remember uh, my IT guy at the time when we were interviewing him, he was whispering me behind the scenes. He's going, he's going, dude, every time this guy's on, he goes, the DOD is pinging the hell out of our servers right now. <laughs> Wow. And why wouldn't they? I mean, well, you don't know what this guy is going to say. He'd be coming on. It's like, yeah, you want to know how to defeat the Sparrow missile system with a paper clip and a nine volt battery? Yeah, yeah they, they didn't know what he was going to say. And so after he came out, all these other military people started coming out, guys from Army and uh, Air Force and um, then the air traffic controller. And I mean, everyone you could think of, except for people in aerospace directly, you know, obviously astronauts weren't going to come out, but they all were saying the same thing. It's like, look. You, you may be onto something because of what we don't see and with things that are assumed that, that again, the firing solution, if the earth is spinning at a thousand miles an hour at the equator and it's zero at the North pole and South pole, if it's a globe, then when you're working in your firing solutions, I don't care what snipers say on CNN, you guys that shoot a bio, it's like, I had to take into account the curvature of the earth. It's like, really? Cause I shoot and no scope, you know, it's windage and elevation. That's it. That's all that's on the freaking scope. You know, you don't take into account the Coriolis effect, but people that are shooting howitzers and tanks yes. and missiles and torpedoes, they never take into account. They're shooting very, very, you know, orders of magnitude further than a sniper. Uh, they are, um, they, they don't take that into the firing solution. It's like, Hey, great. That's a great, great tip. To, to start it off, to start us off. And, and we just kept more and more people start adding to this to where by the end of 2015, I'm like, yeah, I am whatever, whatever doubts I had at all. Cause you never know, right. You know, you think you got a lock on something, but, and then no academics came forward. And by the time we did get end up finally having to talk to some scientists, they were so tunnel visioned. I, I should have guessed that, you know, if you have a master's degree or higher in a physical science, you are really, your, your focus is so narrow that, um, and our, when we hit people, our focus is like a shotgun spread. So yeah, you might be able to pick off this and this, but the rest is coming through. So they did, they didn't have a chance. So it was great. A couple of the questions that I've seen as I was going through some of your interviews, and these were, they weren't necessarily troll comments, but there were comments below. And here's, yeah. here's two of them that I remember. Yeah. And I do want to know some more of the evidence, but. Sure. One of them was, if Flat Earth is a global conspiracy, how come all the continents and all the different governments in the world, even if they're fighting, all agree right. that it is round? 
most of the people wouldn't need it. I sort of treat it like the, this is like a micro macro thing. Mm-hmm. So it, you, you could ask the same thing on a micro version on NASA. Wouldn't everybody at NASA be in on the secret, right? And like, no, compartmentalization is a very, very real thing. No different than any military organization. And that is you don't tell people unless they need to know. So the the people that everybody at NASA doesn't need to know what, you know, what they're doing with the exception of as far as what they're covering up, except for the telemetry guys. That's it. I mean, anyone's working on the fuel systems or the guidance systems or polishing the floors or doing HR, all those people don't, they can just go about their job as usual. The telemetry guys do have to know. And that's straight out of the movie Capricorn one, which I love so much, which is telemetry guys tell you when the rocket goes out of visual range, where that rocket is in 3d space. You know, it's like, oh, it's 400 miles that way and it's 50 miles up and, and, you know, traveling at this sort of speed. Those guys have to fake the numbers. But as far as the other countries, why would you have to tell most of the other countries? You know, remember, there's only five groups right now with launch capability, even public launch capability. You know, China, Europe, Japan, the U.S. and, um, oh, I'm missing one. Who is it? China, Europe, Japan, oh, Russia. Duh. So five countries. So out of those five countries, oh, yeah, yeah. At the highest levels, they would have to be in on it at the highest levels. The rest of the world doesn't have to do anything. The rest of the world just believes what they're told, which I'm going to steal a line straight out of the Truman Show, which, which I love so much from 1998, uh, which is we believe the world that is presented to us. If you're a country in, I don't know, the, the Pacific Rim or Africa or whatever, you're going to believe whatever the media tells you. In fact, I'll give you, I'll give you a great example of this. When I'm inside the U.S. talking, everybody believes that the Americans, there's a wonderful space shot, the Americans went to the moon because rah, rah, waved the flag, we're the greatest, right? USA number one. But when I ask people outside the U.S. why they think the Americans went to the moon, they all tell me the exact same thing. They say, well, because it was on television and you're new. The American news would never lie. <laughs> yeah. I laugh. It's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's what we do. Americans are the, are the greatest. I mean, uh, Russia calls this God bless Russia. Uh, they call us the, uh, the empire of lies. Pretty accurate. You know, our media has gotten so refined and so good at what we do that uh, not only can we convince people in our country, but we can convince people, you know, it's like, oh yeah, look, the American media, they're, they're on the moon. Why would we doubt that? And that's why you know, they, they just take it as face value. But like we were talking about earlier, perception, people believe what is presented to them if it's done by the authority. You know, it's, it's an extension of um, uh, the ash experiment or the, the Milgram experiment. Uh, if you know those, uh, the Milgram experiment, the famous one where it be, the short version is that a perfect stranger has a 60% chance of electrocuting you to death. If, so, if somebody in authority tells them to do it and they, they won't have any responsibility laid on them for it. And the ash experiment is a group think where if you're in a room of, of nine people, and you're looking at the board and the, the, it shows length of lines. What's the longest line on that board, right? And you choose one line and the other nine, you know, the other people choose a completely different line. Mm-hmm. You will completely follow them. It will not take long at all. You combine those two and yeah, it, the, the media, if they hammer on something long enough, people will, you know, the lemmings out there will believe it and will parrot it back to you. you know, one of us, one of us. Another way to answer that too is just, who really knows right now here in America, how many of you listening and us behind the camera here know what Iran thinks about the earth? Do you know if they believe in round earth or flat earth? Do you really know what every government of the world thinks? <gasps> to that point, if you wanted to, you could look up something. If you go into any search engine, I find this fascinating. You could type in ancient cosmologies and click on images, you will see what everybody at least used to think before the globe was out there. You type in ancient cosmologies and click on images, everyone drew the same freaking thing. They drew a snow globe, for lack of a better term. You know, some, you know, the snow globe shape, which is, you know, a, a dinner plate covered with some sort of dome. By the way, that, that shot up there, that brown shot, that's uh, the Orlando Ferguson map from the 1800s, which I loved, by the way. I love the, the roulette table feel of that, that, that early flat earth map that he had. But people 
almost immediately wrote me and they said, yeah, you can't use that map anymore. I go, why? Cause it's shaped like a roulette table. I go, yeah. And they go, well, don't you know all the roulette numbers if they're added up, add up to 666. And it's true. <laughs> that is actually what happens. Like, okay. That's interesting. But, so I never use it anymore. Here's one for ancient cosmologies. So is it more like a jellyfish and instead of saying flat <laughs> well, earth, we those, should say that jellyfish? Isn't, it, you know, the, that particular one, that's just caverns that are, you know, I think they embellish oh, a little bit. I wasn't looking know. below. I was looking above when we're talking, when you're talking about solid firmament. Yeah. Yeah. So it, you know, what's the, you know, one of the questions is, you know, what's the dome made out of, which I, I always loved because if you look up the, uh, the high altitude nuclear, and I'm trying not to say nuclear because the Americans screwed that up, by the way, a little short side, side road, uh, nuclear short version, which we did nuke, right? How you spell nuke N U K E. Well, what's the plural of that? Well, nuclear, you know, N U K U L A R. It's like, no, no, it's still nuclear, but whatever the, um, you look up high altitude uh, nuclear program, and from 1958 until 1962, the United States and then the Soviet Union fired, did all their, their nukes straight up. They were doing aerial shots yes. for four years. And it's like, oh, yeah, I knew exactly what they were doing because that was the same time that Admiral Byrd ended his missions down in Antarctica. Trying to break through the dome. Yeah, trying to break through the dome, which is, again, a really a guy thing to do, right? You know, you find some sort of barrier. What's the first thing you're going to do, right? It's like, get the cannon. <laughs> you know, bring the cannon. It's like, what do you got bigger than that? And, and so they just kept upping the scale until somebody said, yeah, just hit it with a nuke. And the first shots we used, I think, were um, low megaton. But back then, that was really, really a pricey option. You know, like three megatons back in the late 50s. <sighs> really hard to come by. And then after that, it was like medium kiloton range, you know, 200 to 300 kilotons, which is still way bigger than the, the, the Japanese stuff. But if you can't break through something with megaton, you're not going to do it. So why did why'd they keep shooting for four years? Well, because at that point, they were just mapping out the sky. For, for lack of a better term, they were using nukes as a paintball gun to figure out exactly what sort of shape they were looking at. It's like trying to find your dresser with your hand in the dark. Oh, it's here, here it's here, it's here. Yep. Yeah, or yeah, or shooting or, or trying to figure out what the shape of your room is by shooting glow in the dark paintball guns, you know, around your room, even though you're making a heck of a mess, you can kind of figure out what, what the shape is. And then they, they both did a moratorium. They stopped doing aerial shots in 1962. Why did they do that? Well, because you couldn't I mean, at that point, you're done. I mean, you, you couldn't break through it again. If you can't break through something with megaton, one of the scariest words ever, then you're not breaking through it. Not with brute force anyway. So then, uh, then you work on your side programs, your black programs like, you know, harp, you know, maybe we can use a frequency depending on what it's made out of. Right. So what, what would the dome be made out of? Is it heavy elements? Is it heavy water? Is it an electromagnetic field? Is it a unified field? <laughs> Dealer's choice, right? Whatever it is, you can't get through it normally. So use harp. Maybe you can tune you know, maybe tune a barrier, you know, weakness. Nope, that wasn't working. So what do you, what else you got? Oh, you got, um, you got CERN. Maybe you can do, uh, do a little Stargate action and open up a portal and then maybe bypass it, get past it. Uh, we don't know what the heck and what's going on with CERN. Although I do enjoy the, the Stephen King movie, uh, The Mist, which was based on, you know, sort of a CERN technology only on an American sense. And that didn't turn out well. That was really so, interesting. But as far as I know, we can't, we can't get through it, which leads to the question, are we... Are we in here, going back to pop culture reference uh, the, from the day the earth stood still, one of the early sci-fi movies, are we a box of kittens that's being protected from what's outside? Or are we a box of scorpions that should never, ever be let out ever? <laughs> and, and come on, the day the earth stood still, this is back in the 50s. You know what the answer to that is. It's like, yeah, mankind should never be allowed <laughs> to just start, you know, going free will out, out into, the, into the universe. Because, you know, they would do, I mean, as much as I do love the whole concept of the, the utopian Star Trek world, it's like, that's not how it would be. We're, we're way more Klingon than that. Anyway. So what, so you'd have a global conspiracy or mostly global, uh, at least by the superpowers yeah. and you would have training from the point of birth and it would be just like any other scientific thing. I mean, I can see how this would happen. It'd be just about any other scientific thing. If you weren't, um, uh, lockstep with all the other scientists or the ones that get the most grant money, uh, which is dictated by whatever, 
uh, political parties in charge. Right. Then, then uh, guess what? You're not going to be a scientist for very long. So you have to go by that unless you have yeah, some personal there writings. Were, there were a bunch of, uh, and I, I don't usually talk about this, but I, I might want to bring it up on this one. There or now is not the time to be a radio telescope operator. For the last 20, 30 years, there have been a huge amount of radio telescope operators in different parts of the world that have died of different things that appear to be accidents, but you know how that goes, right? You know, like there was a bunch that died in a gondola, a weird, um, you know, one of those hanging suspension Mm -hmm. gondola accidents and single car accidents and train accidents and, oh, you know, died at home, you know, for some reason they hung themselves and, and stuff like that. So do I think the radio telescopes with our advanced tech have the ability to possibly perceive the dome? Sure. Why not? The the only reason you and I are talking is because our camera technology, just the civilian camera technology has reached the point to where, like if you went even back 30 years ago and you were trying to look at a boat on the horizon, disappear on the horizon, even if you had the the high end, you know, shoulder mounted camera, it was still just like like this blob. You wouldn't be able to see anything. Now, $500 off the rack camera with 80, 100, 150 power zoom, you can bring boats that are gone back into frame. Meaning that boat's gone over the horizon. You've seen it. You watch it for yourself. It's obviously gone over, you know, and gone over the curvature of the earth. It's like, really? Take your camera. It's back in frame. Goes over, you know, keeps going. It's like, nope, crank up the zoom even more. The the technology has gone now to where, depending on atmospheric conditions, you can see boats and objects. The only limit to what you can see off into the distance, which is one of the proofs that you want to ask, because that's what most people is long distance photography. Um, the only limit to what how far we can see is the thickness of the atmosphere. That's it. I mean, the, the rest of it, I mean, because remember what we're breathing in, what we're talking in right now is only like 99% transparent, but it's invisible to our eyes. So we don't see the, the nitrogen and oxygen mixing around us. It's, a, it's basically a big fog that we can't even see. But at distance, it becomes thicker and thicker and thicker. No different than water, only thinner. I got a question from the audience here. It's interesting. That, yeah. And this was also in the comment section of the other video I saw. Yeah. They're talking about the moon and all the other um, planets. planets being round, and we can buy consumer-grade telescopes and see that it's round. Sure. And by the way, round means they're absolutely not flat earthers because we don't use the word round. Mm-hmm. Um, round can be a two-dimensional yes, object as well. So your dinner plate is round. Uh, your hubcap is round, and so on and so on. Uh, we use sphere, ball, globe. Uh, so does the moon look spherical? Yes, it does. So I will use, and again, I'm older, so I, this is going to date me. Have you, well, uh, planetariums, which used to be all the rage back in the you know seventies and even into the eighties, uh, you could walk in, there's still some out there and Neil deGrasse Tyson runs one, I think back East, you, you go into them, right. And they turn off the lights and you look up at the ceiling and there's wonderful images of the moon. Does that moon up there on the ceiling look spherical? Yes, it does. Can you land on it? Nope. Why not? Because it's just a picture on a ceiling. In fact, if you took an homage person who's never seen technology, a true homage person, you brought them into that planetarium blindfold, took off their blindfold, you'd blow their freaking mind. Who's to say that when you don't walk outside of that planetarium, you're just not walking into a much, much bigger planetarium. That's all I'm basically saying is that, that whatever you're seeing on the ceiling of this big, big place that we're in, it's just lights in the sky. It's lights on the ceiling. Uh, do they look spherical? Yeah, but we can do that technology right now. I mean, come on. If you took an HD television back 40 years and showed it to somebody, blow, it'd blow their minds. It looks, it looks extremely real compared to what they're used to. So what could you do if you built this place and you had technology that was even a thousand years past ours? Oh, by the way, to throw in a, a disclaimer, we had nothing to do with the building of this place at all. The engineering is far, far, far beyond us. But whoever built it, you know, built in stuff to where eventually we would, as long as we didn't have flying cars, we would figure it out. And come on, we've done, what, 5,000 years of unbroken history, give or take, that, uh, you know, things have been, you know, exploration went really, really slow until the internal combustion engine was made. And that was only made 100 years ago, give or take. So... Mathematically speaking, yes. you're saying, and this would be possible that you're looking at the firmament, you're looking up in the sky, and you're even looking down with a telescope, and yep. you're seeing the moon, you're seeing around uh, spherical. 
yeah moon you're seeing shade but there's yep. some kind of or there could be some kind of uh super hd projector that's putting the image on the top of the firmament yeah could they be don't. could be front screen could be rear screen it's probably built in i mean you see what we do with flat screens nowadays maybe like and, maybe like e-ink you know where it's built in to where the sure. screen is the Sure, sure, sure. But now that but that rubs people the wrong way because immediately you're saying, you know, once you say, well, the, if the moon isn't real, then what did the Americans land on? It's like, oh, they did, really? Yeah. The Americans landed on what now? Because you're, I mean, there's so many little things about the moon. I mean, moon missions have been torn apart since the 70s. You know, they, they since they stopped going in 1972, a lot of people don't know that. It's like, yeah, no one's, they, no one's, the only the Americans have said they've even put men on the moon and nobody supposedly has been on the moon since the 1970s. But that's because faking it nowadays is way easier to detect because of the internet. Because of social media uh, and, and everything that goes along with it, back even but even when the the moon mission finished up in 1970s, there were people definitely geeks and nerds out there that was like, yeah, something doesn't look right, you know, doing calculations and this and that. And then they would go. The only place they could go would be like UFO conventions mm -hmm. and set up tables. It's like I don't think the moon mission is real, and here's why. And then you get into the whole: was there a fake space program, and did they have aliens on the moon? Which is a great cover story. Um, but the the biggest thing for me for the moon mission oh, would be um, the spacesuit. More than anything, is the spacesuit mm. itself, which is uh, it defies thermal dynamics, which is any pressurized object in a vacuum will expand and expand until it bursts. Right. You, you, you can use any little tiny vacuum chamber and look up on the Internet all day. You can put a, a tennis ball, a football, a basketball, a soda can, so anything that's could, pressurized. You, you put like it in a vacuum chamber. a marshmallow chamber. and a penis pump to do this. There you test. go. There you go. So the, there's only one object that's never expanded in a vacuum, and that's the spacesuit that the astronauts wore. And it's like, what, how, how, how did that happen exactly? Because, again, the spacesuit is pressure. I mean, it should have immediately, you know, the air would have tried to push against that suit. It should have turned into a par parade float. He would have tipped over and died. But somebody... Some brilliant think tank guy at NASA said, no, 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 let's just use a soft suit. It will be completely flexible. Fingers and arms will move. We'll put it on television. Nobody knows anything about physics anyway. I mean, seriously, the physics club on any given school is tiny compared to the general population. And we'll put it on TV and no one will question it. And we'll just say, well, you know, whatever's in that backpack, this magic thing. It's like no one to this day, no one has emailed me and said, how did you counteract the vacuum that was that was on the moon? How did that spacesuit not become absolutely rigid? How could they bend their arms and their legs? Oh, sorry, let's go on a whole other thing, which is um, the uh, the air mixture, right? <laughs> nitrogen, oxygen, right? That's what they're breathing. What we're breathing in, by, right? just so you know, guys, is 80% nitrogen and about 20% oxygen. Trace gases just throw those out for now. So when you're on the moon... And, and any scuba diver, if you know any scuba diver, what they will tell you is the only thing they care about when they're down there. And they're checking all the time. They've got that stupid, you know, gauge on their wrist, that watch that tells them how much air they have left. And they're watching it constantly, constantly, constantly. Find me a single clip of audio footage, right, of, of anything from that Apollo program where anyone's talking about how much air is left. I actually have a clip right here. Just kidding. I do have another question. <laughs> I say, no, you don't. You're like, what? No, you don't. They didn't care. <laughs> There's like, it's like, how, how do you have unlimited air? What, where is this unlimited air coming from on the moon? Never, ever happened. Oh, there's so many things I could tear about the moon. Pro anyway, sorry. Go There's on. a lot what of things. Well, let's talk about, well, we're still, we're talking about the projector. We're talking about the projection, looking yeah. at the moon. Uh, where did this technology come from? Oh, you mean who built it? Yeah. Who could have built it? Oh, true. okay. Or is that so, like a whole can of worms? No, no, not as bad as you might think. Um, when it comes to who built it, years, there's one of two roads you can go down, which is uh, an older, advanced civilization that's much more powerful than ourselves, right? The, the old uh, movie Contact with Jodie Foster, you know, the, the, the ancient civilizations. There's been all sorts of myths and legends about older civilizations, although I'm sure most of those had nothing to do with the building of this place. I think that's a whole other level. So it's either an ancient civilization or it's the divine. 
But really, at that point, you're kind of splitting hairs because if a giant golden spaceship just landed in the middle of Iowa tomorrow, you'd have two groups of people that would show up, uh, not counting the military that want to shoot them. Uh, two groups of people, civilians show up, you'd have one group that would say, oh, wow, it, you, know, I, you know, all the nerds would be like, they do look like Avatar. They are eight foot tall blue people. It's like, see, you owe me five bucks. And then the other group would be, we must worship the blue people. We need everyone to start building churches right now next to this ship. And that's, that's how it would go, which is why, you know, prime directive, you, know, you don't want to do that. You know, you're not going to see a golden sh spaceship land and people get out and take selfies and wave and shake hands. It would be too disruptive. So really that's it. Who, who built it? Um, <sighs> Not necessarily the, the, the anyone that had remnants of civilizations, you know, from ancient aliens, which you know, a lot of people have watched, you know, the, the, the sunken cities of Japan, sunken cities off of India, Puma Punku, Machu Picchu, the real pyramids, the Bosnian pyramids, Bimini Road, so on and so on. Those are remnants, I think, of the previous versions of us, by the way. And the, to one more thing, which is, do I believe in alien spaceships flying around? Yeah, I do. But I don't think they're from Mars and Jupiter and Venus and stuff like that. I just think they're older versions of us that have access to, I call the, the unified field engine, which is if you have access to the unified field engine, then uh, you can create, you know, the, this, the cliche UFO technology. You don't need trains and, and submarines and ships and, and cars. You just have one vehicle that can go just about anywhere. So that's what I think we're, we're seeing up there. They're just older, older versions of us. And when we are done with this place, when they decide to wrap this thing up and reset it for good, we will have to move on like a senior class. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. This and interview is harder than I thought because I have, uh, you know, I could probably go talking for a whole lot. So I'm going to have to rein myself back in. That's right. Um, so I'm going to ask one more question then until I open up the phone lines and then we can continue our conversation. Uh, sure. What about gravity? Ah, <laughs> gravity. By the way, gravity is one of the most common things that get thrown at my community and it's a cure-all for just about everything. So well, there's I'll, several different the ways it could actually work beyond what we're told. Uh, well, okay. So let's do, let's do two quick things. First off, uh, the, the disclaimer and every scientist will tell you this, which is gravity is still a theory. They True, don't know yes. how it works. They just know that it works until they, they can replicate re it. They can't replicate it, which and Neil Tyson says it's a magical molecular force that pulls things to the center of a ball. I say that gravity is a magical molecular force that pulls things straight down, you know, in this snow globe. You We're know, really not that, right, but not that far. According, according to the theory, one of the theories of gravity or the theory of gravity is you have two massive objects and everything has its own gravity. The more right. massive the object, the more gravity it has. Right. That doesn't mean it can't be a massive flat earth. Exactly. It could be hella exactly. thick and still have the same properties of gravity, according to their theory, as a round one would. There you go. And to, to let me use an example of gravity and what it can and cannot do. By the way, gravity is relatively weak in comparison to fighting against a vacuum, right? So you can take a straw and with your mouth create a, a light vacuum and, and suck soda out of, a, out of a, a glass. However, let's say you had a second story of your building and you turned it into a vacuum chamber and you have a valve right above you, right? You pull that valve, you pop that valve, what happens? Ask any guy that works with, with deep sea under pressure or submarine guys, it's violent, it's instant, it's not like the movies. The air in your room will go upstairs and it will equalize instantly. You know, pressure next to non-pressure, it's not one of those things where you hear this it's like, oh, we only got two minutes of air left. All those space shows, everybody's dead instantly. The end of Aliens is ruined for me forever because, you know, Ripley, you know, space is behind her and things are flying past her and she crawls out. It's like, yeah, whatever. She's dead in a fraction of a second. So the question is, when, when you walk out of your house, so you know what happens if there's a vacuum chamber in, in your room. You can test this all day long. Mm -hmm. So if you walk outside, why is our atmosphere still here? Meaning, if our atmosphere borders the vacuum of space, this huge, not just any vacuum space, this monstrous, forever infinite vacuum of space, why is our atmosphere not ripped off? And your knee, immediate knee-jerk reaction is going to be like gravity. I go, oh, you mean the same gravity that couldn't keep the air in your room from going upstairs? The exact same gravity? Then that's when people, the, the gears start grinding because they're like, you, know, you want to say, well, there's more gravity. I go, that's not how it works. 
Tell me what happens at the bleeding edge of space. Tell me when our atmosphere ends and space begins, tell me what happens there. Don't tell me the gravity just created this weird thing. You know, I always, it always bugged me when I was younger, like fluorocarbons, like when helium and hydrogen gas and things rise up to a certain point, where do they go? Do they, do they get, do they just fly off into space? Greenhouse gases, that whole term, greenhouse gases makes way more sense if it's an actual greenhouse, if it's a physical barrier. It is straight up thermodynamics. I didn't make the law. Science did, which is pressure cannot exist next to non-pressure without a barrier, a physical barrier. There you go. You're not about to tell me there's no hole in the ozone, are you? <sighs> <laughs> No, uh, what I'm saying is, is that whatever, again, whatever you want to report, by There's the way, no remember that whole, the, the big hole in the ozone down in Antarctica years ago when we had to get rid of all the styrofoam things and McDonald's couldn't use styrofoam containers anymore and or you know, spray on deodorants, even though you can still buy them. The senators own the paper cup company. Yes, I remember that. I'm saying that, that the climate change thing for me, it, it seems relatively reasonable if we're in a building. Right. Because, again, if you have a uh, let's say, I don't know, 800 million internal combustion engines running at basically any time of the day for 24 hours a day, that is going to do something, even if you have an automated system like this that tries to compensate for it. And or and people that try to control the weather on a regular basis, you got to steal energy from somewhere, you know, to, to do what you're doing over here. And that's going to create weird anomalies in different places. You have enough countries that do that. God, whether whether using weather as a weapon or whether to you know help your crops or hurt other countries' crops, that's that's old school, you know, for us. Sorry, I went off kind of on a tangent there. So. This whole show's a tangent, not just this <laughs> show. I mean, this whole concept of midnight radio. The phone number is three two five two six one zero eight nine two. If you want to call in now, the phone line is now open three two five two six one zero eight nine two. If you have a comment or question for Mark Sargent. You guys have some questions. He's going to answer them for you. Um, yeah, I don't care. You can ask whatever. So this would be I a major. I don't even care if it's on topic. You can ask me what my favorite milkshake flavor is. <laughs> Tomorrow I get to a morning. I get to do an interview where um, they're asking me all sorts of music questions. It's like, okay, like, you know, what was your, what's your favorite song? What was the first album you ever bought? And it's like, right on. Do you get listen to, to vinyl? It's round and flat. No, I just yeah, love vinyl, vinyl. I love vinyl. I use I use needle on a record um, very often um, for uh, how the sun uh, changes its path on yes. a regular basis. It's like yeah, you know the needle doesn't go the same path every time it goes around. It goes in or it goes out depending on if you're going forwards or backwards. Ah, oh, so many questions. I know. <laughs> so the sun would would the sun work the same way? Oh, we got a phone call. Yeah, this uh, yeah we. we we do, but I'm sorry. Sun, Midnight sun caller actually, line. This is moon, Jerry. Do you have a comment or question for Mark Sargent or myself? Hello, caller. Hello. Oh, they hung up on us. Did he? Sometimes it's just the mute button. No, it was him. Oh, here we go. Midnight caller line. This is Jerry and Mark Sargent. Do you have a comment or question for Mark? Uh, yes, I'd like to speak. Oh, well, hello, Jerry. I'm, I watch all the time, but it's Grant. Thank you for calling, Grant. From Australia. Oh, yeah. How oh, you wow. going, Jerry? So you're the man from um, the future. <laughs> exactly. Man from the future. I just wanted, I've, got, I've watched a few things on this, Mark. How yeah. are you? Um, I, I just wonder... There's a couple of questions. First question is, can I see the North Star from where I live? Ah, good point. Uh, this is going to be kind of tricky to explain. However, when you see the sky, I... Well, hang because, out. Go ahead. Go well, ahead. Go on, go on. You, you may no, not. You may not. On. Meaning there are different stars where you are compared to where we are. All right, let's, let's drop that. Why, well, you know, that's... I, that's a pro probably a convoluted one for me. Um, wh what about um, the you know all the shows that have been on? Do you do you follow um, Flat Earth Dave? Sure, sure. Dave and I hung out when I was in uh, London a while ago. You like Dave? Yeah, I don't mind Dave, but um, <laughs> it's just these theories. What about Mark Farina? Do you like Mark Farina? Yep. Yeah. Uh, your accent may be throwing you throwing me there. What is the channel called? Mark Tarina? 
no, no, don't worry. All right, don't worry about Mark Serena. I'll just, I'll, listen, my phone might cut out, so I just want to ask one question, Queen. Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. Um, what about Newton's law of gravitational calculations? Well, again, unless gravity can be artificially created, then whether you're talking about uh, Newton's gravity or Einstein's gravity or you know time space gravity, it, it, it's still it is still just a theory. You know, it, it is. It, it does some of the math work? Yeah, sure. But again, until it can be replicated. There's, where, where do you want me to do with it? I, it's, it's not something that, that, uh, that we subscribe to that much. I mean, I, again, I still say that there's an electro, a, 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 a electromagnetic force that works. I, I'm not saying that gravity doesn't exist. I'm saying that it works just fine in the flat model compared to the globe model. Well, virtually no different. Helocentric? Centrism? Helocentrism, the, the solar system model, yeah. Explain it. How does it work? You know, how does it work on a flat Earth? Where are the planets? Uh, okay, and okay. The solar system, no, no different. The heliocentric model, and we'll just say solar system. How does the solar system model work on a flat Earth? No different than it would in a planetarium. In a planetarium with software, we have to simulate all the planets and their orbits and their stars and the Big Dipper and there's Orion's belt and so on and so on. We have to simulate all those on the ceiling. There's, you know, all we're talking about is simulating it on a much, much bigger scale. That's, that's all we're doing. We are whoever built this place has just created the illusion of the solar system because we had the average person, 99.9999%. In fact, like there's like 500 people who's even claimed to have gone to space. Almost everyone has never left the ground. So if the illusion works, that's what you go with. You, you go with the illusion. Can I ask you another question? I don't know. Sure. Can I ask you another question? You got time for well, one more. What's my, uh, what's, What's Elon Musk doing? <laughs> okay. He works at Twitter Elon now. Elon Musk, and I know he's not from, from your neck of the woods. He's from South Africa. Elon Musk is a government puppet. That's all the man is. He, he launders lives in America. He's spending billions. Well, he's spending he's spending he's billions spending. of the government, the U.S. government's money. It has always bugged me that he was like, oh, no, he was the richest man in the world. And he made like, himself. He he is he is just a, a puppet that that does look. I wrote an entire chapter dedicated to why I don't like Elon Musk. Mostly, it's because everything he he promised, you know, all these promises he made. And I know when you're a billionaire, an eccentric billionaire, if you say anything, the news will report it. Everything he said, he never did. It's like uh, I'm going to send two tourists around the moon in, in 2018. Nope. I'm going to sit, you know, save those kids in the cave with my little submarine. Nope. I'm going to do a bullet train from Los Angeles to San Francisco. I'm going to do a super plane from the United States to China in two hours. I'm going to save Puerto Rico's power problems with my solar generators. He did none of those things. And yet he kept getting these massive government contracts. The government basically just used his, him to launder money. That's all they do. And they let him just talk. It just drives me insane. He, they try to make him. They try to make him Tony Stark. He is not Tony Stark. I don't know why the media keeps pushing him to be Tony Stark. He is not that guy. He can barely form a paragraph when he's trying to speak. Drives me nuts. Actually, I think they modeled Tony Stark after him. <laughs> no, don't do not get me started. That's what he said. Tony That's Stark, what he said. Tony Stark was created a, decades. Oh wait, decades yeah, 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 yeah. That's born. right. Actually, in the comic book about oh, thirty years no. ago. Just, but you know what bugs me was he actually made a cameo in Iron Man two. He was actually in it just for like ten seconds. It's like oh why God why. So anyway, no, I don't like Elon Musk at all. I don't. I hope to God that one day he and I get to sit down and talk in person, hopefully in front of a camera, because I will rip him to shreds. All right, the and we I just lost. I had another caller on the line, but they dropped off. You guys want to call back in? Phone number is three two five two six one zero eight nine two. If you have a comment or question, we're ready to take it. Oh, on. do you want while we're waiting for the call? Do you want me? I'll give you my five bullet points about why I think the Earth is flat. You ready? This was um, there was a German um, media team that wanted me to debate a guy from um, Georgetown physicist from Georgetown. And they said, come up with five sciencey things of why, why you think the, the, the world is flat. And the, so number one with a bullet, the reason why most people get into it is long distance photography, because it's simple. 
meaning uh, you, we can see with HD technology things off in the distance, especially over water, because water lays perfectly flat, given that there's no wind, uh, way, way further than we should be able to. I didn't even come up with that idea. People just started running to the beaches and shooting things with long-distance photography. Second thing would be gravity versus the vacuum of space, which I expa- explained just a little while ago. Third would be the, uh, the eclipse shadow, which is absolutely wrong, meaning uh, the moon's supposedly 2,000 miles wide, but the eclipse shadow is only 70 miles wide, which is interesting because that's how big we really say the moon is. Because again, when you're walking down the street and the sun hits you, your shadow is actual size or larger. It never gets smaller. Your shadow just never turns into an action figure on the side of a wall. And yet that's what they're telling us. It's like, oh no, the moon shadow shrinks down to 95% because of, you know, the convex. It's, it's focusing like a beam. It's like, no, nope, no. Nope. Uh, fourth one would be the moon temperature, which I didn't even know was a thing. Somebody had to explain that to me, which is the moon is actually generating a cold laser light which we can duplicate in labs and you can buy them on Amazon all day long, you know, their health and beauty products, which means in the sunlight, it's, let's say it's 80 degrees in the sunlight. It's 70 degrees in the shade, right? Cause it's cooler. It's in the shade. It's blocking some of the sun. You go look at the moonlight, full moon. Let's say it's 50 degrees in the moonlight. It's 60 degrees in the moon shade. Why is it warmer in the moon shade? Because the moon is generating a cold laser light. Now, does that prove it's a flat earth? No, but it means that the, the relationship between the sun and the moon, you can just throw that out. The moon is self illuminated and so is the sun. Well, and to your point, by the way, we don't replicate the sun in planetariums because it's too bright. We don't have the tech to generate. I mean, I suppose if you spent like a billion dollars, you could do it, but we, we don't have the, blind the, everybody. the tech. The what? I said, if you wanted to blind everybody. Yeah, if you wanted to blind them, what, what would be the, the point, right? And last but not least, point number five is the Van Allen radiation belts, which were announced by NASA employee, NASA scientist Van Allen back in the day, back in the late 1950s. And he said, oh, yeah, by the way, there's huge belts of radiation, super, super deadly. No one should ever go past them ever. And then immediately afterwards, Kennedy says, oh, yeah, we're we're going to the moon in this decay. Do the other thing, blah, blah, blah. And people ran back to Van Allen and said, oh, hey, so how are you getting past the Van Allen belts? Because you said it was super deadly. And he goes, well, we're going to go really, really fast. And they go, okay, that's a simple answer. The problem is you have no shielding. The only three things that could shield from radiation are gold, super, super dense, which is twice as dense as lead, by the way, uh, and a whole bunch of water, which, which they use for power plants, right? None of those things you would ever, ever put on the top of an aircraft because it's an anchor. So what did they use to shield themselves with? Uh, aluminum and plastic. And yet the Americans went on multiple trips to the moon and back. Nobody died. Nobody got radiation poisoning. Um, nobody even you know, died of cancer. There's still, I think, four of those guys limping around today. I think. Still four of them. So what happened? Are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly or not? Because if you go to the NASA website, nasa.gov, you can look up this wonderful little video called Orion Trial by Fire, which says, yeah, we're having problems testing the, the Mars program because we, um, we don't know how to solve the Van Allen problem, the radiation belts. It's like, what are you talking about? You solved it in the 60s with antiquated technology. How, why are you saying that? So anyway, those five questions I threw at the, uh, the physicist from Georgetown, he folded like a card table. He said, nope, we are not doing anything publicly. I am out. So there you go. Interesting. Let me see if we have any voicemail messages. Was there anything in chat? Uh, yeah, they were saying they want the voice. They want me to answer the phone. That's what <laughs> Hey, Jerry, it's Vivian. I was just calling. I had a question to Mark about the flat earth theory and the rotation and if it was similar to like a nautical compass globe. I don't know how else to describe it. Anyways, thanks for everything you guys do. Love the show. So the question, hopefully she's asking, let's say I'm using this right here. Right? Here's, here's, your, here's a nice little flat earth model made by Chris Pontius of the documentary Behind the Curve, which I think you can still watch on Amazon. I'm pretty sure it's gone off of Netflix. It was on for three years. So um, does this rotate? No. Why, why would it have to rotate? Uh, it's probably, you know, if, if it's this, it's probably just sitting absolutely perfectly still. It doesn't have to rotate at all. In fact, you wouldn't want it to rotate because you remember centrifugal force. If it started ro- rotating like a merry-go-round, what's going to happen? The water is going to immediately start going to the outside edges, which leads me to another thing. The earth rotating, if it's a globe, is a problem. Right. So centrifugal force, right? Zero miles an hour at the, at the poles, thousand miles an hour at the equator. Right. 
water moves extremely easily when it comes to centrifugal force. <clears throat> there should be this massive bulge of water, like a spare tire, around the equator, but there's not at all. In fact, there shouldn't be any land mass at the equators at all because there should be this wall of water. In fact, there, it should be bald spots on the top and the bottom of that globe. Why? You know this full well. You take a, any sort of um, dish with water in a car, right? You can make even a slow left-hand turn or right-hand turn. That water's moving. That's how easily it moves. So how is it pulling it off on a globe? It should be this, we should have a ring around the world, no different than Saturn's rings, only made of water. But that ever, ever happens. We never see anything even remotely close to it. And by the way, why don't tides affect lakes? Anyone want to talk about that? Doesn't matter how big the lake is. Why don't tides affect them? Anyone? There were some people asking you about the tides of the ocean caused by the moon. They were saying, well, what? Where did the oh, tides? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so if you were making a, something like this, right? All right. So if you're making something like this, yeah, the sun and the moon, again, tiny little objects, 50 to 70 miles, uh, you know, above this. When it comes to the tides, you wouldn't control them with a tiny little, a very strong electromagnetic force, you know, when it came to the moon. You control it like any simulation that we make using the physics engine. You control the tides below. You control it from the base. And then, yeah, the moon, you know, crosses the sky and you can time it by that. Don't forget, the sky really, when it boils down to it, the sky is just a giant ornamental clock system which predates language. That's all it is. And so, yeah, if the moon crosses a certain sky and the tides do a certain thing, you want to say it's because of the moon. But reality is, uh, what if it's just the moon crossing? You know, what if the clock just, you know, chimed at that point? You know, it's like, oh, yeah, when the moon's here, the tides do that thing. Doesn't mean the tides are controlled from the moon. Oh, it does if you're, you know, mainstream science. Oh, no, the moon's 2,000 miles wide and absolutely controls the tides. Like, eh, does it? Does it, though? Doesn't have to. Doesn't the Great Lakes... Uh, like Superior, doesn't that have tide? Not like the oceans. No, I mean, there might like be the there might be some subtle changes, but nothing. I mean, come on. There's look up Guinness Book of World Records tides. There's amazing tidal forces out there, but all the Great Lakes remember are connected all over the place. There's that's huge amounts of water anyway. All right. I'll see. Did I ask you who? What is the reason for this conspiracy? Oh, there you go. Okay, why hide it? That's, that's a great one. Why? So let's say we don't figure this thing out until 1960, right? And that's really what we're talking about. So we didn't even have the ability to, and most of it comes down to why hide it? it mostly it's bad timing, believe it or not. It's not some overarching uh, conspiracy that was pre-planned. It's, it comes down to uh, when we discovered it. So until we had the internal combustion engine, there was no way we were going to figure this thing out for sure. Remember up until then, even go back, uh, what, 150 years, we had wooden ships and we had horses. That's all we had. So once you had the internal combustion engine and then you start, you know, get your rickety planes up and running. Remember, we haven't even had decent planes for that long. So you get the planes going and going and going. And then finally around 1960, you know, for sure. 1960, it's like, okay, we've mapped out pretty much everything. We mapped the sky. We know what's happening in the North Pole. We know what's happening on the outer markers. In 1960, if you figure out the world is not a globe, which we've been preaching for some time, it's this. Do you tell the general public? Your instinct might be, yeah, wouldn't it be a great, it's not such an amazing, huge secret. Wouldn't we tell people? It's like, no, it's we too late. We wouldn't tell them that we didn't know what we were talking about. For <clears> exactly. Years. Yeah, it is way too big. Um, and by that, in fact, let, let's, let's pretend we are in the big Illuminati meeting, you know, like big, darkly lit, long table and everybody there's smoking. And for whatever reason, you know, there's ominous music playing in the background. And somebody says, well, what's the worst that could happen? Right. Well, there's three really, really bad things that could happen. First off would be academically, um, every university in every country. That's a lot, by the way. It's a lot of universities. You would have to gut most of their physical sciences, astronomy and astrophysics. That's gone. Mm -hmm. You don't even know what to do with that. You wouldn't, you won't have know what to do with that for the longest time. And then your remaining physical sciences, geology, hydrology, archeology, span anything with anology will have to be retooled. Libraries would have to be emptied out. It would be utter academic chaos, 
right? Um, economically, that's pretty quick. You'd have to suspend world markets. The, the casinos, which are the stocks of the world, would have to be suspended for a long, long time indefinitely because you don't know what it would affect in the long term. But the big thing would be um, religion, which is you're giving the five major religious houses of this world, um, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity, you give them all leverage against science simultaneously. And you're telling the unified, you know, religions of the world, which, which make up what 80% of the population to not go after science with any sort of vengeance, even though the science has been beating them over the heads with textbooks for the last five centuries and be like, cause it would never stop. It would be like, so you were wrong about something really, really important. You know what? Let's we're, we're gonna revisit some stuff. I don't know, like carbon dating or the Big Bang theory or evolution or dark matter, and it just would never end. Mm-hmm. Science would never recover. I got a phone call from you for you right now, not from you, uh, from sure. Ireland. Laura, you're on the line. Ireland. Hi, Northern Ireland. Northern, Northern Ireland. Ireland. Thank you for correcting me. Uh, no, not right. I'm just saying. <laughs> so hi. Hi. I'm actually so glad I'm able to call in because last week I had no voice, so I couldn't even call in to speak with her or anything. So I'm actually really glad that tonight I can call in to speak to you. My daughter and I have this discussion all the time. She's 15. She is actually doing her exams at the minute. She's in, she's difficult, she's 15. I don't know what way it is, but whatever she's doing her exams, it'll follow her for the rest of her life. And one of the exams she's doing is geography. Her and I argue all the time because she believes firmly it's flat earth. And I disagree. You disagree? So, uh, oh, yeah, I do. Earth? I do not believe. I can understand, yes, it's, you know, why you would say that. I can understand a lot of different theories. I, you know... And every time I even would throw something at her, she always had something to counteract me. Sure. But it still doesn't change my belief of that it's spherical. Uh, th- which, Our which planet is, is a sphere. No, no, it's, it's, it's not a perfect sphere. It, it is actually very, it's quite a lot off of the sphere. With the scientific but it's still the same as the sphere. Let, let me let me ask you this: Do you so yeah. you believe again? And I'm that that's absolutely fine. Everybody everybody in my community starts out believing in the globe. Yeah. Even I. I mean, I used to collect world maps, antique globes. I was totally into it. So you believe yeah. that we'll just we'll start off with something soft. And I know we don't have tons of time, but I'm I'm going to throw this out there. You believe the <laughs> you believe oh, no. American, the what? Hit it hard. Don't don't pissy fit. Yep. Well, <laughs> of course, of course, an Irish girl would say that. Of course. <laughs> Is that what you're thinking, Lassie? Um, the uh, um, so you believe the Americans went to the moon? Um. Well, no, the Americans didn't get there first. Russia did. Oh, okay, we did. The no, Irish no, no, got no. there we first. We can't just by- bypass that. Why don't you? What? So <laughs> what? Because the Americans <laughs> lie about a lot of stuff. Yes. First. It was Russia hit there first, Americans took over. I'm sorry. But yeah, I definitely believe that man has stepped foot on the moon. All right. All right. And it is most of that belief because, and, and I know you're not old enough, but because of the pictures and the television videos that they, they put out there? I'm 38. You're, you're th- I'm not. I'm sorry. Yeah, but you, didn't, you, didn't, you weren't there for the moon launch. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I definitely launch. wasn't because my mum my mum was just there for the moon launch. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so let, let me let me ask this. Do you have um, with, as far as schooling goes, did did you study a lot of science in school? Oh yeah, I did. I was very interested in the whole space you know, everything about space, right through all my children, even, you know, it's something that I've always had an interest in. And it's not just the fact of, yeah, okay, man put foot on the moon. And then there was all this hype about, you know, like, oh, it was, it was all set up. It was all just, you know, filmed, blah, blah, blah. No, I don't believe that crap. <laughs> man had, whether it was then, whether it yep. was then when they said, Man has stepped foot on the moon. 
whether it was back when they said in 19, what, 60, what was it, 60, whatever? Uh, six, 69. Well, whether it was then. Yeah. I do believe now man has been on the moon. Okay. We now know, obviously, we can get water from the moon. We oh, now boy. know that, you know, given that some craters that have fell from the moon, yeah. you know, Times have moved on. So whether or not it was all faked back in the 1960s, I couldn't tell you. Goodness yeah. knows what plant was being taken then. Uh-huh. Given that, you know, I, I don't know. But I would like to ask you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you have been told before that Concord flying at 65,000 feet and right. somebody could see the curvature. Mm-hmm. Off, right? You then had come back saying that 120,000 feet within a balloon, some right. sort of balloon, that there was no curvature. How, right. do you, how do you know that? Were you in the balloon to say that it was on a flat plane? All right. I will use, it for this, I will use uh, the world's most famous scientist. There's only three media scientists in the world. Um, Brian Cox from your neck of the woods, Neil deGrasse Tyson from America, and Michio Kaku from Japan. What about Bill Nye? Right, okay, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, please. How dare you bring Bill Nye I into hate the Bill Nye. I have a Bill personal Nye's hatred. Actor from Seattle. I don't even want to Dol- start Dolph with Bill Lundgren. Nye. All right, so anyway. Arguments so, on, on air. The what? Argument. We're actually agreeing if you let, roll it back and listen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, okay. We, ha- we hate Bill Nye. just got really hot, hot and loud, and I was like, what is going on? <laughs> so, so Neil Tyson came out after the red, after the balloon jump, the, the Red Bull jump, which was uh, done by Felix Bumgardner, where they had multiple cameras on there. And, you know, several were, were, were fisheye lens, otherwise known as the peephole lens. You know, when you look out the, your hotel window, you know, your hallway is not curved. He said, yeah. without, without exception, he was actually upset that that test by Red Bull was scientifically dishonest. Because he said, at 130,000 feet, where they jumped, he goes, there is no way you could see the curvature of the Earth, given, you know, his calculations. Which well, it was I a weather balloon. Interesting. You said a weather balloon at 120,000 feet. Well, it wouldn't matter. We, but Felix Baumgartner actually put on a. Yes, a, a I, yeah, suit I, I'm, just, I'm just sort of saying. So it was either either or. So with that, there is no curvature. Well, if there's no curvature at 130,000 feet, then there definitely isn't a from the Concorde, and there definitely isn't from a conventional airplane, even though I've had thousands and thousands of people tell me, I'll, I'll, let me get through this, tell me that they have seen the curvature from an airplane when they look out the window. I go, oh, really? Okay. Take a picture of that with your phone, put it on your laptop or whatever, hold a straight edge up to it. You know, like the straight edge I have yeah, yeah. right here, and tell yeah, me that I, curvature I understand is still- that. Because yeah, if I'm on the plane, I look finish. to, you know, you see the horizon. I'm not saying that if I'm in a plane, I can say, oh, yeah, look, there's something over the edge. But yeah, no, 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 no. But, but people have. People have said, no, no, I can absolutely see the curvature at 35,000. Well, you're never going why to. Do, why do thousands of people tell me that? And yet none of them will send me a picture of that same curvature. It's not that they don't see the curvature. They want to see it. They've been told this so many times by so many different places. It's the it's it's the George Orwell thing, five lights, four lights. They believe, they want to see the curvature. But when they look at the you're picture, never gonna see. There. Well, that to me is pure stupidity because you're never <laughs> going to see the curvature because where you're seeing at your horizon, yeah, the light is hitting, you know, it's all hitting together. You're not going to see any curve. You're just going to see a blunt line. But that doesn't mean that the earth's flat. If I look at the end of a page, no, I'm going no, to see I, I got like a horizon on a page. Doesn't mean my radiator's not behind it. <laughs> you know, to me, that's pure a pure stupid if you, answer. If stupid you get a chance, reply look, back if you to love science, it, that's never going to happen. I, 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 I warn people of this. Like, if you love science, great, wonderful. Hey, go with that. Don't think about flat Earth ever again. You know, p- you know God be with you. Yeah. But if you get, if you're interested, go down to, cause I know there's a bunch of water around Island. I was actually in um, Belfast not that long ago. 
when you go go down a body of water and look at an object across the water that you shouldn't be able to see, do the math. It's eight inches per mile squared and tell me if you can still see it. Giving on the weather, I know it's going to be different where you are. And so many people have come back and said, yeah, I can see whatever object it is and I shouldn't be able to see it. It's like, that's the point. 20 years ago, you couldn't be able to do this. HD technology was not there. Now you can. Now you can see yeah. just across the water you shouldn't be able to see. But hey, look, I, I appreciate the debate. I do. And I am so glad you were passionate about science and everything. I caution you, though, to believe anything the Americans say when it comes to their technology. Well, I program. don't believe in what well, Americans, Russians, Germans, French, Spanish, yeah, uh, English, yeah, German, Irish. Don't I don't, don't care who yeah, says what. I believe in my own thoughts. All right. No, the only other thing I want to just say is your belief on gravity. My belief on, wait, did you hear the first part of the show when we were talking about gravity or you just want to know? Well, I actually did? missed a couple of minutes. Oh, for the love of God, woman. I know. Yeah. And it was literally because I was so shocked that we were even on a live. I was like, are we on a live? What is going on here? We're on, we're on a lap. So okay. I've missed that bit. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. So gra- I'll give you the, the, the Reader's Digest version. Gravity. Okay, yeah, science, I, I can cook that. Main, mainstream science, Neil deGrasse Tyson will, or Brian Cox will flat out come out and tell you that gravity is a theory that it's a, a molecular force that pulls thing, an unknown molecular force, by the way, that pulls things down to the center of a giant yeah. ball. And I say that gravity is just this molecular force that pulls things down to, and I don't know if you can see the video, to the set, you know, to the bottom of this. That's all I'm saying. It's not really that much different when it comes to gravity. Now, there are arguments about buoyancy that are out there and density, which is that's different because you're talking about water. You can't really talk about water and land the same. I know. I, in my opinion. I, but, but things with like lesser I density. Can, I can be very, very floating within the water. But then again, I can sink in the water. Right. Whereas on land, right. but, but if you, you know, if, if you I hold throw something ball, up, on, if you hold a pressurized up in the air, ball, it's going to come if you hold a football underneath the water and you let it go, it pops up. Did it pop up because of gravity or because it was lighter than the water around it? It's Same lighter. thing with helium balloon. But if I right? stand on it, it ain't popping anywhere. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But I do. Okay. I'm sitting in my, at my kitchen table right now. If I threw something up in the air, what's going to happen to it? It's not going to flip and stay there unless I stick a bit of uncooked pasta to the ceiling. That is one of the most original things anyone has ever said to me. <laughs> I know, but uh, you will you will maybe find out over time. Listening to Jerry's show, I am very original. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Thank you again. Oh, no. I, 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 I talk to you all day. You're wonderful. Thank you for calling in. Oh, we appreciate thank it. you so much. All right. No, well, thank you. I, I'm actually, uh, I'm quite glad I spoke to you. My daughter will be yeah. so proud of me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful! On that note, Mark, you yes. have a you're talking about the Netflix movie. What was the name of that? Oh yeah, again? The, doc- the documentary. Um, yes. Yeah, so there was a movie that was made about us. I think it's still uh, there. Ooh, five years ago now, uh, it was called Behind the Curve, and uh, it was a documentary team out of uh, Hollywood that they came out and followed us for a year, and ended up going to our very first conference down in uh, North Carolina back in 2017. And uh, Amazon picked it up and uh, iTunes and then Netflix picked it up, I think, at the end of 2018. And it was and you can still you can still find it. You can just type in behind the curve movie and you'll be able to find it out there. But it is I mean, our community hated it because there were you know, they it was they had detractors in there. So not only were they talking to flat earthers, but they were talking to scientists and psychologists. They even had. Uh, uh, Kelly was Mark Kelly, the, the astronaut on there, which was really weird. He was there for one reason and one reason only to, to deliver that line for the trailer, which says, I first found about flat earth when I was in space. It's like, oh, okay, very nice. Yeah, and people forget that all the, the, the astronauts uh, are almost exclusively Air Force officers, high ranking Air Force officers. I've talked to a bunch of them I and mean, they guys, you know, you know, full bird colonels. Stuff like that. You don't make colonel in the military without not having to uh, know how to keep a secret. No. So if I was going to buy some of your books, where would be the best place for me to look for those? 
You know what? I'm I'm not going to pitch anything individually. I again, I didn't get in for this. I know you money. didn't, it, it, but I'm personally asking you as a favor all right, because all right, all right. I'll get if contacted could, by a thousand emails. All right, type. All you have to do is go into any search engine, type in Flat Earth Mark. That will lead you down to certain uh, rabbit holes. You want to go on Amazon? You can type in Mark Sargent Flat Earth or Flat Earth Mark on on Amazon. Uh, I, I don't get any. I get money for the books, but I don't get any money for the documentary. Um, and then everything else is just out there. You'll find it. But yeah, there's three books, the flat earth clues and then flat, uh, the sky's the limit flat earth clues into the world. Uh, I wrote a survival book, you know, just for the heck of it called empty shelves for people. And in fact, I'll give it, anyone wants to email me if they want the, the PDF, I give that up for free because survival should be free. But if you want the print or the audio versions, those are out on Amazon as well. And the rest of it's out there. You will find, you know, but don't just, I encourage anyone that wants to look into this, don't just look at my stuff. There are so many content makers out there who have done amazing things. And I don't even mind if you look at the channels that, that poke fun of it at us. I mean, major, it's about every major network has done a thing on us. Uh, and I, I'm a big believer that any publicity is good publicity. So, but if you're, uh, if you are curious, go ahead and start down the rabbit holes. Oh, I'm sorry. One more thing. There's, there's a really cool thing I, I'd like to plug real fast, which is we made our own app called the Flat Earth Sun, Moon and Zodiac Clock app with, uh, with all sorts of great stuff on there. There's like a Bitcoin challenge. If you can make it through like the, the, the two weeks worth of questions, one question a day for two weeks uh, and not be a flat earther, I think he'll give you like three Bitcoin. He's not ser- He's not kidding, by the way, when he, when he does that. And there's a friend finder on there, which if you want to know the flat earthers in your area, there's tons and tons and tons. There's like 100,000 people already registered on, on that particular app for uh, to, to be like, you know, your location. On the, you want on the to map. find that on your website, a link to it? Uh, you'll be, yeah, it's on the, it's on my main, main channel. I, right. anything, I only, the only channel I maintain is my YouTube channel. Oh, really? Everything else is not maintained by me. So you might find stuff that I've done out there, but, uh, the only, the easiest way to get a hold of me is just email me. I will say this, every single video that I make, uh, in the description box is my email address, my actual phone number. In fact, here, somebody try it. Like somebody from the chat, call my phone number, um, right now. And I'll tell you what number is calling me. And, uh, my, um, uh, anyway, physical address, all that stuff. You can get a hold of me every single video. So there's like 1500, 1600 videos out there on YouTube. I'm easy, easy to find. You can even come visit me on, on up near Seattle. Yeah. One more final question for you. We got yeah. about, uh, 40 seconds and let's see, they're wanting to know what microphone you're using. That is a great question. I like that it's round, but you're talking about flat earth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, it when, sounds good. A flat, a flat microphone is tough to find, as you know, except for like the the puff piece. This is a uh, blue brand Snowball. Okay. And I got I used to have a white one, but it was way more is you know people were like noticed much. it more. So this yeah. is just a black one with a piece of foam, you know, taped on the. Well, actually, this is hot glue. I went so rinky dink on this. This is ghetto. I just hot glued you know a piece of foam on the on the front of it. But uh, that's what I use. But it sounds great. Mark, right. thank you so much for being here. I thank you. It, it was a pleasure. We learned a lot. And a lot of people have more questions. And I really think the app is going to be of interest to some of the people that are in our chat room that still have questions. Yeah. 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 Um, in fact, here, hang on. Before you go, let me, uh, I'll sh- even show you real fast what it looks like on screen. I'll put you on full screen. Hey, look, look at this. There you go. That's the, oop, don't show that. That's, that's the uh, flat earth sun, moon, zodiac, cock. And that's real time. So that shows you where the sun and the moon are on the app at any given point. And, uh, and it's got all sorts of links. We, we spend earth. a lot of time making it. I don't get a dime off of it, but uh, I like promoting it because it's people like the visuals and they like using their phones. I'm Gen X. So I hate phones, but uh, it's kind of fun. So there you go. Awesome. Also shows you how the sun can work on a flat earth map. Yes. People say, you know, that question is like, how, why are there time zones? Cause the sun's really, really small, but there's the sun and the moon in real time. So there you go. Uh, I don't want to ask you about solar flares, but that's solar okay. flares. Yes. That's all right though. Don't no, You, you can ask real quick. Um, it's a minor thing, but let, let's, you can throw it at me really fast, right, which so- is um, solar flares. Again, no different than, the the sun question earlier, which is the sun is really, really small, then the solar flares really don't mean that much. And I know that, you know, does the sun throw out some radiation? Sure. No different than a little incandescent light bulb that, that's hovering above us. But uh, do let's put it this way. When I got into flat earth, 
every thought I ever had about a uh, space catastrophe, be it a gamma ray or a comet or a meteor or, you know, a binary star system or Nibiru or a solar flare, you know, like the movie Knowing, out the window, completely out the window. This world is not shutting down because of that. It's only going to shut down from within. All right. Thank you very much. What was the name of that app again really quick? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is called the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock App. And uh, I can even put it in if you want. I could put it in, oh, in the chat room. I'll pin it. I could put like I'll I'll uh, I'll put it in the um in the chat as soon as I as soon as I can. I'll put all your your stuff in the link because but, but it's called here. the Flattered Sun Moon and Zodiac Clock app. It's really really cool. Three three bucks and you have it forever. And uh, again, it's really it's you know pictures worth a thousand words, and it's a, it's a great thing to throw at people because a lot of people can't visualize. It's like what does it look like? It's like right here, that's what it looked like. Thank you again. It's Mark Sargent, everybody. I appreciate you coming here. I'd like to have a conversation with you in the future if you're up for that. I don't think. Yeah, as, yeah. As long as Laura wasn't I mean, too let me rough know. As you. long as long as your as your people think it's it's good and I'm not insane, by all means, bring me on. You might be insane, but that doesn't mean you're not wrong. You know? <laughs> well, they haven't caught me. Yeah. I can see guys chasing me with a big butterfly net. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mark. You have a good evening. Yeah. Bye, guys. Hello, Maggie.